basically I am in love with these books. They have taken over my life and they have emptied my wallet and I am going to read them and I'm going to have such a book hangover after. Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brooke if you're new here and if you're not new here you already know me. Today I'm going to be talking about two books that I read recently. They're from the same series. It is the Throne of Glass series and this is Crown of Midnight. Um, so I've read the first two books and I have ordered the next two. So I've ordered Air of Fire and is it Queen of Shadows I believe? Yeah. So I have honestly been absolutely blown away by these books. Um, I don't know why it took me so long to read them. So I read A Court of Thorns and Roses and I read that, I think I read the first book probably about a year ago and then I took a little break after the second one. So I read the first two and then I took a break after the second one and I read the third one, I don't know, maybe only a few months ago I think, but I reread the entire series. So, uh, that being said, if you're unfamiliar with these books, they're both by the same author. Um, Throne of Glass and A Court of Thorns and Roses are both by Sarah J. Mass. If you liked A Court of Thorns and Roses, I would venture that you would probably like these books too. So the first part of this video, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the series and then the I'll let you know there's going to be a ton of spoilers later just because I want to ramble about it. So <laughs> uh, you can watch the first part if you haven't read these books, but if you don't want any spoilers, don't watch the second half. I can put I can put like time stamps in the description. So, okay. Let's talk about Throne of Glass. So basically you have this assassin, her name is Selena Sardothian, and she gets taken from prison, uh, which is like a mine, and she goes and she's fighting to become the king's champion. So to do the dirty work of the king, basically. There's a love triangle involved, which I didn't know in the beginning. Uh, even though it literally says on the back, two men love her, the whole land fears her, only she can save them all. I didn't read that, so, uh, but yeah, incredible, incredible series. Uh, I, I mean, there's eight books, but I've only read these two. And I was very confused as to when I should read Assassin's Blade. So it is a prequel novel, but because these came out so long ago, I thought that the prequel came out after the entire series. So I thought that the seven books came out, starting with Throne of Glass, and then Assassin's Blade came out after, but apparently it didn't. So some people are saying you should read Assassin's Blade before you read Throne of Glass. Some people are saying you should read it after Air of Fire. Unfortunately, I didn't know that you were supposed to read it before Throne of Glass, which isn't a set thing. Some people just prefer that, but uh, I didn't do that. So now I'm going to read it after Air of Fire, except now I have Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows on the way, and now I'm going to have to order Assassin's Blade. And to be fair though, so I ordered a signed copy, a signed hard copy of Queen of Shadows. So it's going to take like three weeks to come. So I'm hoping that I can Air of Fire is going to get here in a few days, and then I can hopefully order Assassin's Blade and it'll come before Queen of Shadows. But anyways, uh, yeah. So I was very confused about when to read uh, Assassin's Blade. I'm going to read it after Air of Fire. Comment down below. Tell me when you think I should or should have read it. Tell me when you read it in the series. Let me know. That's probably it for the spoiler-free stuff. I just want to talk about these books because I love them so much. If you couldn't tell by how many little tabs I have in here, I have, I think I have more in Throne of Glass, which was surprising because I think that there was a lot of scenes that I loved in Crown of Midnight, but when I got to like the second, not the second half, but when I got closer to the end of the book, you can see there's like nothing tabbed here. It was because I was just like so engrossed in reading it. I couldn't even be bothered to stop to grab a, a post-it flag, so... Yeah, let us start with Throne of Glass. So I have some discussion questions ready on my computer over here. Let's start off with these pronunciations. So if you have read this book, you know, if you've read any of Sarah J. Mass's books, you know that the pronunciations for stuff is just wild. Like, except Crescent City, the names 
are refreshingly easy and I was very happy about that. <laughs> so we have our main character and that's Selena Sardothian. So when I first saw her name, it's C-E-L-A-E-N-A. -E -E I thought it was like Kalena or something and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know. So thankfully this saved me. We have Kaol Westfall. I was saying that like Kale or like Cole, um, I buddy read this with someone and she said that she was saying like Kyle by default, which is totally fair. Um, so yeah, I forced myself to follow the pronunciations because I didn't want to, since it's like an eight book series, I was like, I don't want to be saying the wrong names for this whole thing. And when I talk about it on my channel, I don't want to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. So we have Selena, Kaol, Dorian, Nehemia, Caltain. I was saying Caitlin. I, I don't know. <laughs> Aerobin. Uh, also, yeah. Then we have um, the nickname for Selena from Nehemia, which is Elentia, uh, which I think is just kind of like assassin. I don't know. Uh, oh, the places. I have had a harder time with the places than I have with the names. So we have Eelway, Aurelia, Tarasin, Adarlin, and Dovier, Orinth. I don't think, I don't remember that one actually. Aniel, which is where Kaol's from, Melisand, and Wendlin. So I had a hard time with Eelway and Aurelia because I just really didn't think it made sense. But anyways, so yeah. I, didn't read the Assassin's Blade, so so one of the discussion questions that I was reading was who did I think was behind the murders? Uh, so spoilers here, click off if you haven't read this book. But so I was pretty sure that it was Kane the whole time, either like Kane or Parrington, because I mean like there was just something about them that was so like not good. <laughs> so obviously, yeah, it turned out to be Kane, but. I wasn't sure the whole time though. I thought that may like maybe that was too obvious, but no, it was Kane. I want to know how you guys felt about Nehemia because I wasn't really sure about her at first, and then I ended up liking her. And um, I'm not sure if I think she was supposed to be more of an important character than I felt like she was. Uh, so I don't know. What did what did you think of her? But. Uh, getting to the important stuff, Dorian or Kaol, I have seen way too many spoilers for the next books. Um, I don't really think it's anything important. I try and stop before I see too much, but uh, I guess it's my fault for not reading these books until like eight years after the first one came out. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I love, I freaking love Kaol. And I, because of the relationship between her and Dorian in the first book, I kind of was like, ooh, okay. But I, I've pretty much loved K.L. from the beginning, and I'm pretty sure that's what SJM wanted us to feel, because in uh, Crown of Midnight, like, Selena's like, it, you know, it's always been K.L., so. But, someone else I want to talk about is Knox. What is his deal? Like, so obviously I finished throne of glass i thought he was going to be in crown of midnight and he wasn't and i'm really confused because they made him out to be such like an important not important but i don't know why they talked about him so much if he was just going to get sent away and leave the castle and i like i thought he was going to be really important so i'm expecting some more knocks in the next books so he better be there, and if you've read this whole series and he doesn't come back, you're probably laughing at me right now, and you're like, no, he didn't matter. He matters. I liked him. I thought he was cool when she saved him. I loved it. I loved it. There are just so many great, like, angsty scenes in these books. Like, there's just so much tension all the time between, like, just, well, in the first book, between Kaol and Selena, between Selena and Dorian, between Kaol and Dorian, because... Dorian's all jealous and Kale's trying to be like, mm, no, I don't like her, and he actually does. So I love that. Honestly, it was such a well done love triangle. I thought it was really awesome. So I want to talk about Selena's character development though, because 
in even in the first book she did like her character development was just so awesome like she started off as this person who was angry and who didn't really have any room for any other kind of emotion all she wanted was to be free and she was just so angry at everyone and everything and then she meets dorian and kale and i feel like she kind of has a reason to be more human again and not just think about her freedom like she she ended up actually liking Dorian and Kaol and she was friends with them and she got to read and play piano and it was just so so cool how in the beginning she was just this ruthless assassin and you know that's all you saw of her and then as the book progresses you kind of see a more tame side of her but also she's so badass like she is the most incredible character and I found myself being really thankful that, and I talked about this with my reading buddy as well, I will link her Instagram uh, in the description, but I talked about it with her and we both said it was really refreshing to have a character that wasn't, she didn't have this like internal monologue of sass, her sass was reserved for actual character interaction, so when she interacted with Dorian or Kaol or the king at one time, she, she would show it in actual you know interactions with other characters instead of just having this like this internal monologue of sass and i, I don't like that uh it can sometimes get a little bit irritating but i think she just was the right amount of it so let me just okay let's just go through a couple of scenes let's the first one that i have tagged and if you guys want to know kind of what i tag it's just things that i like it can be lines that i like to that are really powerful and that really move me or maybe some kind of dialogue or just anything really um and the, the colors don't mean anything it means that i lost my blue tags in the couch somewhere and i had to go get other ones so so my, the first scene i have tagged is when she picks up the daggers or the hunting knives from the rack and she's like my dear old friends and i just thought it was and then it's like a wicked smile spread across her face i just thought that was awesome what is the, the very last tab that I have in here is, oh, it is, oh, it's the very end, oh my god, it's her and Kale, and it's, and it's, um, well, champion, and she goes, yes, captain, and I just thought it was so, I, I don't know, I just loved it, I don't know why, <laughs> I just thought it was the cutest thing, oh my gosh, can we, okay, for a second, can I just fangirl about how Kaol was going to give her his sword for the fight against Kane? I almost had a heart attack, I swear. Like, and honestly, I was a little sad that she took Nehemia's thing, whatever, wooden staff. I think the sword would have been a little bit more practical, but I understand the symbolism. <laughs> uh, I could not believe that he offered her his sword i honestly was just like screaming it was so amazing so anyways that's how throne of glass ends uh she obviously wins and then she becomes king's champion big surprise obviously everyone knew that was gonna happen <laughs> from the beginning so we have crown of midnight which starts off with her on her first like mission we find out she's not actually killing people, she's just faking their deaths and bringing random heads to the king. Honestly, like, I cannot get over how incredible this girl is in this book. She just walks in to the king's whatever room he's in with this head and throws it and like, I honestly cannot handle her sometimes. Like, she's amazing. And this is the first scene in the book that I tagged. So even though I'm a fan of Kale, I do love a lot of her and Dorian's interaction and I love like the tension between them because he's still in love with her but he knows that she loves Kale. So this is when she, her and Dorian are having this kind of like, not a confrontation but they're whatever, they're talking and he says, do you want me to fight for you? Is that it? I don't know I just thought it was a good line like I just I enjoyed it I enjoy I enjoy the communication between them even though there wasn't a ton in this book because it was focusing kind of on even though there wasn't really a ton of I don't want to say there wasn't a ton of scenes between them it was just different in th uh, than it was in Throne of Glass 
And then, what is the last one that I tabbed? Um, oh, so they're down in like the catacombs, the, not catacombs, but the dungeon place under the library, and Dorian's following her, and it says, he'd been just about to go to lunch when he'd seen Selena strut into the library, the sword strapped across her back. Perhaps he would have let her go about her own business were it not for her braided hair. Selena never tied back her hair unless she was fighting and when she was about to get messy. And I just thought it was really funny because he just knows her so well that he's like, she braided her hair, she's going for a fight. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was really, it just shows kind of how much he like watches her and knows, which sounds creepy, but like, you know what I mean? That is actually not the last scene. I'm sorry. That was the wrong tab. What is my last scene? Oh, it's after they're fighting, her and Dorian, they're, they lock that thing or whatever, that weird thing in the library, they kill it and shut it behind the door, and so she goes, she says, so, Selena said, spitting blood onto the stones, do you want to explain yourself first, or should I, and I just thought it was really funny, like, again, like, she's just, she's, like, a little bit sassy, and I just love it, so. Basically, I am in love with these books. They have taken over my life and they have emptied my wallet and I am going to read them and I'm going to have such a book hangover after. I I had a huge hangover after A Court of Thorns and Roses. I just didn't even know what to do. Like, I was kind of just like, my life is empty. I don't have any more Rusand or Feyre and I don't know what to do with my life. And the same thing is going to happen with these. Also, the fact that she's the lost queen of Tarasin, I think I, I honestly think I'm going to reread both of these books before I read the next ones because I'm just a little bit, not confused, but I guess confused. Um, I don't think I, I really read into the history enough to understand. I think I, I sometimes skim over that when I read and it's, it's probably not good, but whatever. I'm going to go back and read. I do understand, but I also saw a spoiler that she was how do you say this? Aelin? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look up those pronunciations because Crown of Midnight did not come with a pronunciation guide. Sarah J. Mass, you need to put a pronunciation guide in every single one of your books because no one can say your characters' names except you. But yeah, there was no pronunciation guide in here. Uh, but yeah, so she told Kaol this like clue or whatever. It was a date and then he goes and he's looking at the, the family trees and family histories or whatever and he figures out that she's the lost queen of Tarasin and he just sent her to Wendlin which is where the are there fae there like uh, her her family is there I guess in Wendlin I don't I don't really get it um if you want to explain it to me that's great because I'm a little bit lost on the whole like history and Selena's family thing but anyways I'm in love and uh, Air of Fire cannot get here soon enough. And I'm very excited for this signed copy of Queen of Shadows. So that's it for this video. Um, tell me below if you've, well, I guess hopefully if you've watched this far, you've at least read these two books. Um, I'm planning on doing a buddy read with someone. Oh my gosh, I did not just do that. I have Crescent City here, uh, or House of Earth and Blood, and I'm going to be doing a buddy read uh, for this book. This book is humongous, and I'm a little bit terrified. Um, I'm going to do the buddy read in July, which is probably a terrible idea because I'm going to do Camp Nano, but oh well. Uh, but yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and comment down below if you've read the series, and what you thought of it, and when you read Assassin's Blade. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!